boy, was he a player. And it was just simply because who he is and what he is and how he did it and his, his <coughs> come from a great family. And oh, yeah, the whole great family. family. So, uh, anyway, you know, I, uh, just a little of my background so you kind of know where some of this comes from. Uh, I coached for 38 years. Uh, I, in 40 years in, in education, uh, 35 in Texas and five here in New Mexico, and kind of, uh, I had coached with Coach Potter uh, for four years in Texas, and so we, we knew each other really well there, and and he, I'd been thinking about trying to, you know, I <coughs> retired after that, uh, after, you know, 35 years, and, and I'd always thought about coming over and double dipping and making a little money, you know, make some money, and so I could retire, and uh, and just really lucked into a great, great opportunity, you know, and and uh, and oh, uh, Kirk did a great job with those with the kids and the whole bit, and so it ended up being a good thing. Uh, as far as my coaching background, I. I, uh, like I say, 35 years in Texas, uh, I coached quite a few schools. I was a head coach, three three different schools. I've been an athletic director, three different places. Uh, uh, I've, I've coached a lot of, uh, I've coached a few small schools and quite a few big schools. And a lot of, a lot of what you're gonna hear today uh, really, kind of originated out of the Odessa Permian system. Uh, I coach with uh, Gary Gaines. Uh, I don't know if you know that name. That's the guy from the movie? Yeah, yeah. He's Friday Night Lights uh, coach. He's the coach at Odessa Permian. And uh, great guy. Uh, I feel like I owe a lot to him, you know, for, for uh, a lot of the basic things that that I hold dear to, to me came from him and came from from that system. Now, a lot of it's been tweaked. A lot of it's been, you know, the game has changed a lot. Uh, and so everything that you're going to hear is, either, you know, I, I beg, barred, and stolen everything, you know, just like all coaches tend to do. And then you kind of tweak it to fit what you, what you want to do. But, but that's just a little bit about me and, and you know the, the the things that you're going to hear. Just a little bit about Aaron had said something about philosophy. I just jotted down these three things and, and I said you know be sound fundamental fundamentally with alignment and assignment. Uh, I believe that is critical uh, and a lot of what we believed in was Get kids in the right place, and and get them in a position where they can be successful, or at least have a chance to be successful. So alignment, I felt was was critical. In in order to do that, then then we we need to make our system where they felt at ease and they knew that whatever they saw, that they, <coughs> they knew what they were going to do. And that kind of goes into the second deal is, you know, we wanted them to play fast. And I felt like the only way we could play fast was be as simple as we can without being so, uh, uh, you know, without other people just knowing exactly what, what we're going to do. So simplicity was really important to us. Uh, being as simple and as sound as we could possibly be what was critical for us. And so, uh, you know, I put on here, there's a fine line between simplicity and predictability, and that's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, this game has, has changed so much from when I started coaching. When I started, uh, uh, there were either three in the backfield or, or two backs in the backfield, and if you want to get real wild, you split somebody out, you know. And uh, of course today it's 
as you know, you're de you're defending the field, you know, and and it's a different game. But uh, but I still think simplicity. Uh, if kids know what they're doing, they're going to play faster. They're going to play better, whether they're great athletes or not. So that's what I talk about by playing fast. And then then something that was really important to me that I wanted to care, you know, for this to carry <coughs> over to our our coaches was uh, <coughs> coach for perfection. Uh, I wanted it to be as perfect as it could possibly be. Now I know, I don't know if we ever reach perfection, but we sure wanted to try to do it. I, I put down there, uh, you know, don't overlook anything. I think sometimes coaches, we have a tendency, you know, we're tired, it's been a long season, we're going through things, and we'll see something, but we just kind of let it go. I mean, you know, that's eh, not worth getting into. I tried to make a, a big point of that with, with our defensive staff, and I had this little saying on my desk in a frame and where it says, uh, what you see on film is either taught or allowed. And I wanted to see that every, every time, uh, every day before I went out to practice. What you see on film is either taught or allowed. So if you're seeing a kid that's, that's doing the things that you want them to do, they're doing what's been taught. But if you're seeing kids do something, uh, particularly over and over, then it's probably something that's being allowed to happen in practice. I think practice is, is key to the game. I mean, you know, I mean, but I think we try to, uh, you know, they say practice makes perfect. I always said that's not right. Perfect practice makes perfect. And so we strive to really, really implement that that aspect of it and not overlook anything and if we had some kid that just continually we, we kept seeing something that was wrong uh, then then that's that's my fault because either I'm allowing it or I haven't taught him well enough or either I'm allowing him to stay on the field when he's not coachable so, so that's my fault. Get him, get him <coughs> if, if that's the case. So, so I always thought that was extremely important. Is is coach to perfection. Try to try to coach kids in a manner in which, when you see it on film, by God, you know, you recognize, you see, that's exactly what we want to do, or or we're trying to get to that point. I, there's really a fourth one. I didn't put it down, but I think it's it's extremely important. It, is uh, the fact that you know, uh, uh, team, the idea of team is, is uh, and I saw your little quotes in your, in the dressing room, I, I like those, I, I saw some of that stuff, which I think is tremendous, but, uh, and I think that's something that if uh, coaches don't continually strive to, to reach team, that, that concept of that bonding thing, uh, it, it's tremendously important, and I think it's something that, that can make an average team better, and it can make a, a better team great, you know. And uh, I will say this, th this about the, the 2011 uh, team, that might have been the closest, closest, knit, tightest group of kids that I've ever coached. They weren't the most talented, and they weren't the most athletic. They, they weren't the fastest, uh, but they might have been the tightest bound team that, uh, that I ever was around. There was no selfishness, and that's something that we, you know, uh, we pushed hard, real hard during offseason. It started in offseason, but was uh, eliminate selfish actions, you know, uh, Kids that, that are not willing to act right in, in class or they're not willing to make their grades to, to be eligible to play or they're not willing to follow team rules or whatever, then, then that's an unselfish act. And uh, or, or if some kid wants to, uh, he's on the team and he's playing, but he wants to take a playoff here and there and he wants to do those things, to me that, those are unselfish actions. 
And so to me, that's part of our, my philosophy was let's, let's uh, take that selfishness out of the equation. And I, I prompt, I, I mean, it, I've seen it over and over, groups that can eliminate that selfish attitude that are willing to be unselfish, that are willing to buy in, great things will happen. By the way, I congratulate you guys on a good season. Uh, just nearly was went the whole distance. And I kept track of it. Number one, because I, you know, been around Aaron, but uh, but with Michael there, I, I, every uh, Saturday or whatever, I I got on the computer and looked up the scores, and you know, I, I would I would check see see how Centennial <coughs> did. It just kept winning and winning and winning, <coughs> you know. But uh, so that's that's great. You've got a lot of good things going. In fact, that's why I told Aaron. Not only does this building remind me of Cleveland, your program reminds me. Of Cleveland, <coughs> you know, because we were young, we were brand new. We we were there was no tradition, there was no anything, and so it it was. It you're creating it, and that's that's the great thing about it. That's what that's what drew me to Cleveland to begin with was the opportunity to to start something brand new, mm -hmm. and I'd never had that before, and so it. Luckily, it worked out really well. Uh, you know, I, this uh, team business, I guess, you know, I was in the Marine Corps. And, uh, you know, the Marine Corps has, a, has that saying, Semper Fi, you know, Semper Fidelis. It means always faithful. Always faithful. And so that became a real strong part of me. And that's what kind of played into this, this idea of, of unselfishness, of, of giving of yourself for something, for, for the betterment of the team, for, for, to help others, to help those around you. And uh, I think that's extremely important that that type of attitude can be developed. So the, that's kind of my philosophy in a, in a nutshell, I guess. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm not a, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into the front, but I'm not a blitz it up uh, uh, attack, uh, that type of deal. I, I always believed in get kids to understand base defense and get them to believe in base defense. Then, then if we want to heat people up and if we want to change it up or get some movement or whatever, then, then that's a plus. But, but boy, if we can get good at base, then, then, uh, uh, we, we've got a lot of, uh, of you know things accomplished that we wanted to do. Uh, I get uh, all about, and it's been uh, ten or twelve years ago now. Uh, we were, I went, uh, I, I coached in college with a, this guy that uh, uh, he ended up and he he ended his college coaching. At, at Tech, and and uh, he was uh, an alumni of Lubbock Estacada. I don't know if you know. It. It's a predominantly black school, and uh, and he is a black guy, black coach, and and uh, we were really really close friends when we coached together there, and and uh, <clears throat> he he got the head job at Lubbock Estacada. I was the defense coordinator at San Angelo Central, which is a good school, good program. Uh, doing doing good things, uh, but Lovell is kind of my home. My mother lives right outside of Lovell. Both my sisters and their family. So it was an opportunity to kind of come home, and and uh, she was getting older, and I thought this is a chance to kind of get there and and maybe help take care of her or whatever. So so I came with him and uh, was a defense coordinator. Uh, I don't know if, you know I don't know if you ever experienced. Nearly all black, you know, black kids. That totally changed me. I mean, it, it really. Uh, I I would I'd always been a pretty aggressive coach. I mean, kind of get in your face and you know, yeah. Well, there I found out real quickly if you do that, you're fixing to have a fight. I mean, there's there's fixing to be a battle. So I had to learn how. I, I really learned that I had to gain their trust first. And I had to gain, I had to, 
they had to realize that, that I really, truly cared about them before they were going to relax and, and kind of let, let you into their world. Because a lot of them were in some really, really tough, tough life and tough world. And, but, but what I'm getting to is this. Uh, it was a, uh, in the old classification, it was a, a 4A, you know, when 5A was the, the highest uh, level. But it was at the very bottom of the 4A. Uh, the, the enrollment of that school and the area that ran that school had just lost people and lost people and lost people. And so it, we were fighting with, with very, very small numbers. Our, uh, our, our athletic level was not real good. And uh, we had done basically a lot of what you're about to hear, or at least part of it anyway. And uh, it had been okay, but we were facing a deal where we didn't have any defensive line. I mean, we had some skilled guys. We had some guys that could run, but we didn't have any defensive linemen. So uh, David Moody and I went up to a UNM when Rocky Long was up there, and we spent about four days, four, it might have been five days, uh, with him just dissecting that that three three five deal that you know he ran because we thought well maybe our only chance is we just put these guys on on the move and bring people from every direction and and all this thing and now he he knows it he can do it uh, I found out real fast I didn't know it enough I didn't I didn't have enough belief and I also realized you still got to have those defensive linemen. You know, you still got to have them to do it. And the worst defense I've ever coached in my life was that year, not because of the scheme, that scheme, but what, because we just didn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything to fall back on. We didn't have a base, you know, because we went into it thinking, well, boy, this is just, we're going to just bring the house, do all this, and, and, when, when those really, really good team, good offensive linemen and well-coached line, when they start picking up all that stuff, then where are you? You know that? So what I'm, I'm getting to is it taught me a lesson you, that I better have kids believing in a base, a base defense, uh, something that we can live and die with if we have to. Then I found that if we wanted to bring pressure, if we wanted to, to blitz or whatever, it was working a lot better because it wasn't something that people were spending a lot of time preparing them. So, so we we went back to base and, and in our in our front we have we had really two fronts that were were our base. Uh, and I'll let me draw one up over here and I'll put it side by side. Now I'm going to put it in a formation just for demonstration purposes that we don't ever see anymore. I don't think do you? <laughs> we we probably saw that more than any formation this oh, year. Oh really? Well, because we played Berlin twice. Well, so, I, I got you. I and got they you. were yeah. uh, they're yeah. good eye formation too. Oh, real good, yeah. So, but just uh, you know, whatever we had, what we call a strong, what we call strong which was, every, both these fronts are going to be overshifted fronts. We were going to line the nose up in a strong shape. We, we were going to put our, our strong side tack. By the way, we flipped everybody with the exception of corners. Our, our strong side, what we called our in, our strong side in, we called him a stud in. He became a five technique. Uh, over here, we had a. Uh, now, coach, would you flip that even if tight end was boundary? Uh, depending on who they are, what they did. Yeah, and, and I'll get into a lot of that, where we'd make boundary calls, uh, field calls, uh, things like that. But primarily, if, if they were going to line up in this, we probably were going to declare to to a tight end if. If they were a real strong running team, like like you say, Belen was, but uh, it, like I say, it's just going to depend on situation. Our other 
tackle. We call our nose at one of those tackle positions. We're really, we're really a, a four-two-five. If you really want to get down nitty gritty, <coughs> we're we're a four-two-five. We have four down linemen. We have two main linebackers, and then we have five secondary guys that are that are going to work. So our other our weak side tackle, we lined up what we call a four eye or an inside shade of the tackle. Our weak side end, we just called him an end. He lined up on the weak side. Our our mic was always going to be be the strength. Our mic was Mike, you know. Our mic was Michael, you know. So it, when I started screaming Mike, he knew, you know, what I was talking about. So and our our weak side linebacker was our wheel. You know, our five secondary guys, uh, the one the one position that was key to us was what we call our bandit position. And if we call strong and they come out in this set, he was going to line up in a you know like a an old nine technique. If you know if we're talking about these techniques, that was what we called our bandit. That was Reese White. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Coach, uh, real, real quick, just on your front, what type of personnel would you want in each all right. spot? That's, that's a good deal. Because, let me put this other one up, because they, okay. they both are, are the same teaching technique. This one was called cheat. Our nose, instead of, instead of being a shade on the center, he's going to be a shade on the guard. Uh, our, our weak side tackle. Instead he's going to be in a three. Huh? A three tackle. Yeah, a, a three technique. That's right. Uh -huh. Our weak side tackle is what we're going we call a two eye, an inside shade of a guard. Our uh, our stud end was going to be a seven technique, but not a true old seven technique like in years past. I mean, those guys were hard up inside. Uh, I mean, and he's still a C-gap player, but we were gonna. We were going to get him as tight on the tight end as we could, but he still is a C-gap uh, seven technique. Our weak side end was going to line up what we call a ghost seven. If there was a tight end, you know, like that, then then he was still he was going to be the same technique as this uh, stud end. She kept him wide so they couldn't get outside to that yeah. side. So uh, that that was his alignment. My, the Mike linebacker was going to be uh, an A-gap player. We, uh, we wanted him to, usually we split the tracks of the, you know, and I'll talk about Stan and everything in just a minute, but uh, he was an A-gap player. Our wheelbacker was, was a B-gap player, and I, I'm going to go through that here in just a second. But the thing I wanna, want to uh, say is our nose the, the technique he learned in strong to us was exactly the same that we learned that he played in cheat. Our nose uh, was a big old kid, uh, but he couldn't spell cat if you spotted him the C and the T. You know, he was not the brightest in the world. So, but he he could play this because. Uh, he knew on cheap where to line up, and he knew we we drilled it so much, and he did it so many times. He was a, a good good player. wasn't a great player, but he was a good player. Uh, same thing with our our tackle. Uh, he's playing a four eye, what we call four eye, an inside shade of the tackle. He's playing exactly the same technique that that we're lined up in cheap. Only he's on the inside shade of the guard. So the, the teaching doesn't change, you know. Uh, the what his stance of, change according because he was uh, oh no he's still on the inside of a guy so slightly. Uh, this is a you know this is the the exception you know this five technique plays a little different than that seven technique, but in reality, even though we took on a tight end, we really looked looked hard at the tackle. So, so uh, it was a lot of the, you know, same thing that he would see from either one. Now, our our in in our weak side in uh, was 
was a uh, uh, technique. Of course, he on this he would be a if there were a tight end, he would be on an outside shade. So you know, a little bit different, but but it's still the the very seldom you and one or two other ones that would line up, you know, too tight on us and and do all that stuff. By the way. Nearly everything, especially secondary, everything you see in that thing, that sucker right there made my life miserable. Uh, a lot of stuff, he made me change. I mean, not so much change, I had to tinker with it. Just, just to give you an example, I'm gonna, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Here, like, like this is all my offense and he knew we were probably going to be cover two, you know. So, so here, <coughs> and he's picking on who's who got it. He's coaching with now, but uh, of course he's going to run this this little smash route. Of course, this guy's going to set me. He's going to go, going to run this little smash route, you know, and do this. He's going to go. What'd you do? And I'm back vertical. Only in this case, it wasn't. It was. It was over here. It was over here because he's gone. Well, it could have been either way, but in the case, and then he's straight up. Now here's Mike that could run five two, maybe with the wind behind his back, you know. And, and that kid y'all had that, you know, he could he was at least four six. I yeah, think. yeah. Four five, I'm sure. And the, that was in 2010. And you just, you just, I mean, ripped us, you know, with, with that play. So uh, I had to come back. And so everything that you're going to see in that, if like if we came out in that from that point on, and I'll go through all this thing in a minute, then we were making a, a different call. Over, if the back was over here, we're making a different call. We were going to be at quarters. We were going to be quarters, you know, click and bail and, and uh, we were going to overplay this guy, and then we we're still going to run cover two to that side. So he created most of, of the problem, you know, the stuff, a lot of the stuff that you see in there because of what he did. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off track, but he lets, uh, he lets said, Michael know about that play all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, no, we, we brought out film and watched how Michael, he, he couldn't play counter very well. Because we're pulling the tackle instead of the guard, he made some excuse that he couldn't see the he, right because the guard right. guard didn't pull, so well, he, he didn't was, know to he go. He was key in guard, you know. And it's like, well, Michael, it's, it's a big fat dude right next to him. Right. Pull, can't pull you it. see that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're giving our time. He's about. funny. He's a good man. <laughs> but anyway, so so the idea behind this was was to make this as interchangeable as we possibly could, and to whether we were lining up in strong or we were lining up in cheat, that we were going to make it where kids could play fast and, and not have to think and think, oh, wait, this is cheat. Now, now I've got to do that. I've got, or this is strong. I've got to do that. So, so that's what I did. Now, let me go through personnel with this. Uh, let me put up this guy. Uh, Personnel-wise, the... the the player I was going to find first was, was kind of a, uh, he, he was a linebacker type slash secondary type guy. He, he was a guy that could take on, was good enough to take on a tight end if he had to, but was also good enough uh, to drop back and, and be a DB. And, of course, that was old Reese White. And so that was our bandit. Uh, that was the first person I was looking for. That was the first guy that was gonna, gonna make us do be able to do what we did. Simply because he was, a, he was, a, you know, a linebacker type, DB type, uh, type guy. Uh, What'd you do if you didn't have one of those type of guys? We've had them uh, in in years past when we ran a lot of cheap. Uh, then we did we didn't adjust the way we did. Uh, at Cleveland, uh, he was really, truly more of just a linebacker, uh, and and we uh, we had to we we changed up the way our 
our secondary adjusted. All of our adjustments came with a secondary. Uh, our front, if, if we were going to uh, call cheap, we were going to be cheap. With, with a few exceptions, uh, a few formations might make us check to something else. But with few exceptions, we were going to play what was, what was called or a lot of times uh, our game plan.